The NFL Today post-game show is sponsored by Miller Lite, official sponsor of the NFL Player of the Year Award. Miller Lite brings you the NFL's best. Irv, I tell you, that really puts the heat on the Washington Redskins in the NFC East. Well, three and three, but Brent, the three losses are all in the division. Twice to the Giants, one to Philadelphia, so they're, they're behind the eight ball. Meanwhile, the San Francisco 49ers, they have put a little heat now on the Los Angeles Rams for tomorrow night. Well, they won today in a squeaker. The game is much closer than the score demonstrated. Dallas played a will, will of a game. All right, let's take everybody now through the scoreboard to get you up to date. Here's the final on the Giants score. 2017, Phil Simms, Odessa Turner. Odessa Turner slowly becoming one of the best receivers in the NFL. Minnesota and Green Bay, and yes, Herschel Walker did make a difference. Uh, Irv, what was your last stat on uh, Herschel? The last stat was 148 yards and still going up. <laughs> and Keith Millard, four sacks. So he likes the fact that Herschel showed up too. Now here's one that may surprise you because it's close. It's 13-10. There's about five or six minutes to go down in Tampa Bay. Joe Ferguson, the quarterback, so we'll keep an eye on that one for you. Now, Houston and Chicago, this has been a game of huge plays. 79 yards from Tom Zach to Gentry. Moon goes 45 yards to Jeffries in the game. And the Bears are struggling for their lives in this one. Miami and Cincinnati. The Dolphins from behind now lead at 20 to 13. They're on the fourth. We'll keep an eye on that one. New England and Atlanta. Flutie with three interceptions, also a touchdown pass, 15-13. Patriots over the Falcons right now. And here's the final, and the Dallas Cowboys are now 0-6 on the season. This game was tied at 14 in the fourth quarter, and in the 49ers seized command. Well, they did. The defense uh, stood up, and everybody expected them to play a great defensive ball game. Keenan Turner picked off a ball, drove it into the end zone. But Steve Walsh demonstrated a great deal of composure standing in their way he did. And, you know, they just broke down in the last they half got of the a first quarter. Big call. Irv, when Walsh was called for a fumble, was his arm back? Was it a good call by the officials? I thought it was a good call. The rule is very clear on it, Brent. If your hand is coming forward, it's, it's, it's a passing motion. His arm is going this way when the ball was knocked out. It was a fumble. Okay, we've got uh, lots of action to show you, keep you up to date on those breaking scores, and we'll do that when we continue with our post-game show in just a moment. Over its life, a Motorcraft battery delivers enough energy to light up a small park, like Candlestick Park. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. A Motorcraft spark plug has to fire 500 times a minute. Over its life, that's a spark five miles long. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. Radio Shack's having a great sale. Everyone's having a sale. Oh, yeah, listen to this. Radio Shack's 4995 micro cassette recorders, just 3388 A 1995 AM FM pocket radio, now only 1088 And over $100 savings on an AM FM stereo cassette car radio. Even an AM FM clock radio with cassette for only $59.95. Ellen? Keep talking. I'm listening. Check your Sunday paper for Radio Shack's spectacular fall sale supplement. Or pick one up today at Radio Shack, the technology store. Filtered, never heat pasteurized, Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its smooth, real draft beer taste, the world is a very cool place. So tap into the cold. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. All right, a reminder on CBS tonight, we'll start you off with 60 Minutes, then Murder, She Wrote, and the Sunday night movie, The Big Easy. And it will not be easy for some college football powerhouses next Saturday because we have a special doubleheader day in college football beginning at noon Eastern time. Here's Greg Gumbel with a look ahead at a pair of great college rivalries. The Crimson Tide flag will be waving proudly in the wind and Alabama hopes to burst the Volunteers' balloon in this important Southeastern Conference matchup. Alabama coach Bill Curry is hungry for his first taste of the Sugar Bowl and he's counting on the strong running attack of Murray Hill to bring sweet victory. But it's been a sour week for Tennessee coach Johnny Majors. He'll have to rely on freshman Chuck Webb now that Reggie Cobb has been suspended from the team. A classic matchup in game two, number 10 USC against number one Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish are coming home for this one following a long road swing. And they remain on track to repeat as national champions. Coach Lou Holtz is counting on his quarterback, Tony Rice. 
The scrappy Heisman candidate has carried his team to six straight victories this year. The Trojans have a quarterback weapon of their own. He's freshman sensation Todd Marinovich, whose left arm has left opponents in the lurch as USC points for its annual showdown with the top-ranked Irish. And the doubleheader starts at noon next Saturday from Birmingham, Alabama. It'll be two unbeatens in the Southeastern Conference. Now let's take you back through the scores and show you some highlights of the action today. This one in the Meadowlands, 20 to 17. The Giants come away with the win. And yes, it was football time at the Meadowlands. Mark Rippon lays this one up. Irv, what a beautiful catch by Sanders. Really a great catch. A receiver has to concentrate on the ball. He does a great job with this, laying flat out and coming up with the reception. But Phil Simms, under pressure for Bill Parcells, just seems to get the job done time after time. Well, this time he goes to his big tight end, Mark Babaro, hitting him in the end zone for a 12-yard touchdown, and the Giants have come back and take control of the game right here. What's your feeling about Odessa Turner? I go Odessa Turner, he's got great speed, and uh, he's beginning to develop a soft touch there. You see him crest that pass right there. He's de developing into one of the top receivers in the league, right? All right, so the Giants with the win, 20-17, to 17, and the Skins with three losses in the division. All right, Irv, who was the... Finest Viking running back, perhaps in history. <laughs> well, Chuck Foreman. Chuck Foreman has all the records, but I think the guy today, Herschel Walker, showed them something they'd never seen before. He rushed for 148 yards today. He's still going. You know, the guy, there's Chuck Foreman right there here. Go on cue. All right. Here we go now. And you talk about footloose and fancy free. Oh, Folks, boy. here comes the Herschel. Get rid of that one shoe. I remember Keith Byers doing that in a college game for Ohio State against Illinois. Crowd loved it. Not only do they have Walker, but they also had Tommy Kramer firing a touchdown pass to Rick Finney. Two TDs for Finney on the day. And one more time, Irv, here's your guy. One more time for Herschel Walker. He likes to run up and tackle outside. And you see, he picks a hole there, bursts up field for 22 yards. And he said, Irv, I'm going to love this Viking offense. All right, let's, uh, let's get an update from somebody now on the, uh, the Tampa Bay game because they were up by three. It's still 13-10. They're in the fourth quarter. We'll get a time check on that one as we show you some of the highlights from the game. 2.35 to go in the game, we hear right now. Out of the shotgun, Joe Ferguson, a little rusty, folks. Uh, he hit the umpire right there in the navel. <laughs> Vinny's not playing because of an injured knee. And then it was the defense urge. Well, the defense is playing heads-up ball all day today, Big Brent. Uh, Ricky Reynolds picks off this Rodney Pete pass and scampers 68 yards along the left sideline for the touchdown for Tampa Bay. Rodney Pete going to Robert Clark. 33-yard touchdown, and that was uh, Rodney's first touchdown pass in the National Football League. And again, time running down, so we'll continue to monitor that one for you. Now, Houston and Chicago, two minutes to go. We get the word out of Soldier Field. Houston has the ball. Are they on a drive? They are on a drive now against the Bears, so they perhaps can get down and kick a field goal. Two minutes to go in that one. Miami and Cincinnati. And how much time left in this one? 2.12 to go in this one in Cincinnati. Miami has the ball and driving. New England and Atlanta, 15-13. How much time in this one in the fourth quarter? T time running down with the two-minute warning. Three interception for Flutie in that one. All right, San Francisco and Dallas 31 to 14 the final and speaking of the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers let's go back down to Big D very quiet down there Tim Brandt take it away no question about that Brent it is very quiet it was a whale of a football game for three quarters 31 to 14 is the final and again as has been the case all year the 49ers dominated the fourth period Tim Brandt along with Dan Jiggets and standing by Willis now is the man that made so much of it happen, and that's the quarterback, Steve Young. He was the leading rusher. He had 79 yards rushing, 13 of 18. Steve, 172 yards, two touchdowns. Big afternoon for you. Uh, it was a, a great game. Joe told me to wait till the fourth quarter like we're doing all year so that we could... Uh... <laughs> hey, Steve, I thought one of the things that really made you effective today was, again, rolling out and hitting those corners. Really kept some pressure on the defense of the Cowboys. Well, it really did. You know, the Cowboys came into the game saying that they were going to play two-deep zone and try to double cover our wideouts, JT and JR. And so then we had the drop down, drop off passes, and we had a running game going, and then uh, rollouts helped give us some time to, to throw the ball. But uh, Dallas really did a good job of just slowing us down and making us be very patient. Steve, we're going to show you the two touchdowns now, the first one to your tight end, and explain to us as they develop. Well, the first game, uh, this play right here was an audible at the line of scrimmage. I saw a two-deep zone, and uh, what it does is send the tight end down the middle against their middle linebacker. And uh, we just kind of sneaked it over his head for the touchdown. Brent Jones has been playing 
uh, uh, great football this, this season. Now, you didn't go to your number one receiver, Jerry Rice, much today. He only had two catches, but that second catch was for a touchdown. Take us through that one. Well, this is just man-to-man. -man. We saw As soon as we line up, we see JR on Everson Walls. I know it's that's the place to go. I just lofted up in the air, and JR, you can see right here, makes a tremendous uh, catch and adjustment to the ball, and uh, that was the game right there. I thought the key there, though, for the touchdown pass was the timing that, that you put on the ball and the touch, just kind of dropping it over right between the, the uh, end zone, Jerry Rice and your receiver, and then going out of bounds. Right. You know, Dan, I was really worried about the crown this this field has. It's really kind of a downhill throw, and I really thought that I might have put a little bit too much on it, and Jerry made a nice play. I see you got your flak jacket on there. You didn't run <laughs> too much flak today, huh? A little flak when I got out of the uh, out of the pocket. I'm going to really work hard on staying in the pocket, Dan, and uh, see if I can become a real drop-back quarterback as I play more and more. Steve, thank you very much. Congratulations. You go to 5-1. and one. We'll see you along the way. Thanks, Timmy. All right, Steve, right now let's go to Pat Summerall. Pat? Okay, we're at Giants Stadium where the Giants have just beaten the Redskins 20-17. And one giant heroes, Otis Anderson, is standing by down on the field. 101 yards, 25 carries. You want to carry that much? I tell you what, whatever it takes to win. If it means 25 times, I guess I have to carry the load. You know, uh, OJ, in the in the first half, you had like 25 yards, and then you came back and got uh, 75 yards in the in the second half. Were there any adjustments you made at halftime? Well, what we did was uh, we went in and we found out that uh, a lot of plays that we were trying to run inside they were doing a lot of stunning so we thought we would stretch them first by going outside and then come back later on, later on with the inside game which has started to work how did you feel about the decision three times bill parcells made it to go for a first down on fourth fourth down every time you made it well raul was nursing a bad leg so uh we felt we had a better chance at trying to get the first down than the field goal because of the fact that he, he was nursing a bad leg i know that last week after the philadelphia game they thought that you know, the Giants running game wasn't there, and maybe O.J. Anderson's getting a little old. How does that make you feel when you hear all that talk, oh, oh he's too old to, to be a starting running back? Well, first of all, John, I, I really don't pay that any attention. I don't read the newspaper, and I don't listen to myself or, or I say I don't uh, do interviews, for, you know, when other teams are, are talking about me. I don't want to hear anything negative or positive. I just go out and try to play. I just thank God for my life, my health, and my strength, and the ability he's given me to play. Well, we say congratulations to you and to the giant teammates of yours, and thank you very much. Thank you. Now let's take you back to the New York studio and Brent Musburger. All right, Pat, thank you very much. Updating a couple of stories now. The Chicago Bears have fallen behind 33 to 28, 136 to go, and it was Lorenzo White in for the touchdown that put them ahead. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to check in on this one. Tampa Bay leading Detroit 13-10, and the Buccaneers on the move. And we'll continue in just a moment. At BIC, we sympathize with the ways that you pull and stretch your face in search of a better shave. That's why we've created the Big Metal Shaver. The patented Big Metal stretches and smooths your skin thanks to its unique metal guard bar, so the shaver glides closely and comfortably. So instead of stretching, start reaching for a Big Metal Shaver. It stretches your skin for a better shave. And that's no stretch. I was always the quarterback's favorite target. I never dropped the ball because I had hands like glue. And even after football, I stick with my favorite beer, Miller Lite. I don't want some watered-down version of a regular beer. I want the less filling beer that tastes great. White. Not again. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, Dwight. Nice. There's no catch when it's Miller Lite. Less filling tastes great. build and shape our future, we invite you to learn the technology of tomorrow while you serve your country in the Navy of today. All 
right, on the scoreboard, let me get you up to date. Tampa just kicked a field goal, so they lead it by six now with two minutes to go. And in a shocker, because they did it on the road today, Miami comes from behind and they beat Cincinnati 20 to 13. The Bears are still losing. We'll monitor that one. But tonight in Oakland, game two of the World Series between the San Francisco Giants and the Oakland A's. Now, last night, Dave Stewart of the A's silenced the Giant lineup, limiting them to only five hits. I spoke to Dave earlier today, and I asked him about the leadership role he's assumed with his club, a role that is relatively unusual for a starting pitcher. Well, I do things by example. Um, like last night's ball game, I felt that it was an important game for us to get ahead of the Giants right off the bat and uh, get our first foot out. And I just went out and did the best job I could do. Um, I'm not a rah-rah guy. We got Dave Parker for that. Ricky Henderson has come on, and, and Dave Henderson are the rah-rah guys and the guys that are more talkative. I just try to work hard when I'm out on the mound and lead by example. You know, Dave, there seems to be a fierce determination on the part of the A's not to let this one get away. You feel you were the best team last year, but lost to a miracle pitcher by the name of Oral Hershiser. Well, Oral last year was definitely the dominant force in the World Series. Uh, this year, I don't think that we're thinking a lot about last year's uh, World Series because you know, this is a totally different year, and if you dwell too much on what took place in the past, it could cause some problems for you and what's going on right now. What we're trying to do is play good fundamental baseball, play nine innings of baseball every game, and let hard work work with the talent that we have on the field, and we should win games. The only problem against Toronto was Rick Honeycutt's uh, mechanical problems. Has he sorted that out? You may need him in a spot against Will Clark before this series is over. Well, Rick has been tough for us all season long. Um, he did have some problems in the Toronto series, but I don't think there's going to be much for us to worry about in the World Series. He's going to be, he's going to be right there when it comes time to use him. Um, we've had a lot of work during the uh, off days on the sidelines, and Rick has gotten a lot of work in, and he's going to be sharp. Dave, congratulations. Keep it going. All right, and tonight it'll be Mike Moore against Rick Russell. On the NFL scoreboard right now, the Bears are going to lose. They turned it over on fourth down. The Oilers are going to run the clock out in Soldier Field. Meanwhile, down in Tampa, the Buccaneers are up by six. The Lions attempting to come back. Let's check in right now live with James Brown. A wide open Robert Clark for the first down for Detroit. Run out of bounds at the 48. Sorry, James. You're going to see that when you play those deep zones. It's that prevent type thing. It's that Watch this. Drop out, drop out, drop out, drop back, drop back. Play it for the deep pass. Don't give up the big one. They leave a huge area right over there. That's what Rodney Pete sees. See everybody dropping, dropping. Fires it over there for the first down. You got to, it's a prevent defense, but you have to play a little tighter than that. 102 remaining. Wayne Fonts watching the stretch. Short pass to Clark. Whoa. He's got the first down and some room. And Mark Robinson runs him out of bounds at the 28 of Tampa with 55 seconds remaining. And taking advantage of that extremely loose, and I do say extremely loose, prevent type coverage. It's a good call by the Detroit offensive people, Mouse Davis's group, to get that screen out there and take advantage of those deep drops and then let them run for the long gainer. And that's where the speed burners come into play. Detroit needs a touchdown to win it. Complete to Clark inside the 10. Rod Jones ropes him down. Great athletic ability on Rodney Pete's part that time. People all around his feet jumps over a player to buy a little bit of time and then and then picks up Clark. Here's watch this shot right here. Watch Rodney Pete right here. He's going to get some pressure. Reuben Davis 79, the outside linebacker Kevin Murphy. He jumps over a player, then he picks up his receiver coming through there for the first down. Sixteen ten ball game. Tampa on top. A world of time remaining. Forty-five seconds. The Lions have the ball at the nine. 
of Tampa. All right, we're going to go back and check in on the final few seconds, but uh, Irv, it is a final now that Chicago has been beaten. So for the time being, at least, Minnesota has climbed into a first-place tie, and Tampa needs to hold on. What happened to the Bears in this game? The story is very simple. Turnovers. They turned the ball over six times. Mike, Mike Tomczak threw four interceptions. Now, Brent, when you do that against a great defensive team, you don't have a chance to win. You know, it's shocking that the Oilers go on a road and win a game, but into Chicago coming off a loss. I know. It's a big surprise. I'm sure people in Minnesota are celebrating right now. I guess we can only speculate that the Bears are not the same without their spiritual leader, Dan Hampton, at this point. Well, oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it, Brent. They, they, that club loses a lot, of, a lot of their heart when he's out of the lineup. All right. The timeout is over. Let's go back to James Brown now in Tampa. Intended receiver, That's Robert right. Throw it away. That's right. Throw the ball away. Don't make that bad decision down there as he did earlier. You've got three downs down there. All it takes is one. Throw the ball away and start over. They're using crossing routes down there. They're running people all over the place, crossing them in the back of the end zone, down on this part of the field when you're getting man-to-man -man coverage. Crossing routes are awfully tough. With the quarterback showing some cool and poise in this stretch. Second and goal. Complete at the four yard line. Stacy Mobley. Ball is marked at the five. Now here's where I think that here's where I think that the silver stretch has some problems when you get down around. Here's what's going to happen. It's going to happen up here in the top of your screen right up there. He's going to get out of bounds, which is smart to take advantage of the clock. The slot back out there just stops right there. Just stops right there. Know where the sideline is and get out of bounds. On this part of the field now is where I think the silver stretch suffers because the field is cut down. You don't have as much field to stretch. Incomplete. Jones covering Robert Clark. I think they ought to design something. I think they ought to come out with something with that gets Rodney Pete outside more. I think he just makes a bad pass there. Really didn't have anything. I think they ought to get him outside, a dead sprint out, one way or the other, right or left, where he has the option of finding somebody or running the ball. This could be the ball game for Detroit. Fourth down. He's got it. Touchdown, Detroit. Rodney Pete. It was a foot race between Rodney Pete and Kevin Murphy. And Pete, with the bad knee, won it. Well, that's what he can do for you. Get him outside. That wasn't a design sprint out. But you get him outside, and he has the ability to run the ball or throw the ball, he can make some things happen. A routine point after becomes a major one here. Eddie Murray will attempt to break the 16-16 deadlock. The holder will be Jim Arnold. 23 seconds remaining. Just a tremendous performance uh, by Rodney Pete and the Lions. Ray Perkins gambled and lost, keeping Testaverde out of this game and feeling they could win it. So now, the Minnesota Vikings move into a tie with Chicago, and Tampa Bay fails. So the Vikings 26-14 over Green Bay. We've had a lot of drama. Some of it just occurred down south in Atlanta. 
where with time running out, the Falcons got the third field goal of the day from Paul McFadden to edge the New England Patriots and Doug Flutie by a score of 16 to 15. So Atlanta comes from behind with a great defensive effort and the final ticks on the clock uh, now down in Atlanta. And here was the winner by McFadden. And again, it was a 22-yarder on the day. His third right there. Swamp Fox loved that one, Herb. <laughs> I guess so. What a sigh of relief for that Atlanta team as soon as that ball went through the uprights. Okay. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who watched the San Francisco 49ers explode in the fourth quarter and to watch Phil Simms and Odessa Turner, we bid you a fond adieu. For those of you who watched the Herschel Walker show for the Minnesota Vikings, we'll come right back and continue our postgame activities in just a moment. Open your eyes up! Hey, check out the old time. Come on, will you? Come on! I got it! I got it! That was the chance of a lifetime. I know. I'm that man in the middle of the year. Hey, 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 yeah. see if you can hang on to this. <laughs> Your best comes shining through. The world thirsts for a car that is economical, yet fully equipped. Basic, yet polished. Practical, yet inspiring. Some may think such a car is only a mirage. It is. The award-winning Mitsubishi Mirage. Buy the special edition Mirage EXE and get air conditioning and AM-FM stereo cassette at no extra charge. Save over $1,000. I'm tired of us centers getting no recognition. I played 13 seasons in front of millions of fans, made All-Pro twice, and started in three Super Bowls. Yet no one knows who I am. Hey, even if I'm not well-known, at least my beer is. Miller Lite. An all-pro center doesn't want some watered-down version of a regular beer. I want the less filling beer that tastes great. Oh, 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 oh me. let me get that. Hey, aren't you Randy Cross? It's well known. When it's Miller Lite, less filling tastes great. Looking down again at Giant Stadium, where the Giants have defeated the Redskins 20-17, Sort of a crushing blow, wouldn't you say, to the Redskins' hopes of a divisional championship? Yeah, I would think so. In fact, in their history, they've never lost a series and then ever won their division. And I think, as we said, it's not only two games, but it really puts them three games behind because they've lost twice to the Giants, so they'd lose all tiebreakers. So I think it's going to be an uphill battle the rest of the way for the Redskins. Three times the Giants went on fourth down, fourth and short yardage twice, once fourth and seven. They made it all three times, and all three times it led to points. Here are a couple of the key plays. First, Mark Bavaro's touchdown from Phil Sin. Well, you know, after you get that running game going, then you can do this. They get in a play pass, they fake the run, everyone reacts to the run, and Bavaro's able to sneak across. And the other to Odessa Turner. He was doubtful. In fact, yesterday they didn't think Odessa Turner would play, but he turned it on here. And Phil Sims made a good read there. He's looking for man-to-man -man coverage. They get it on Davis out there. The safety gets caught in inside, so Brian Davis had no help deep. The Giants with the best record now being chased by the Eagles. How good are they? I think the Giants are pretty good, and I think they kind of proved it today. I know when we were talking to Bill Parcells yesterday, he said, I'm not sure if we're good or not, and I think he got an answer today. I think... The Giants are a legitimate contender and one of the good teams in the NFL. All right, John, thank you. We will be in San Diego with them next week. For John Madden, then, I'm Pat Summerall saying so long from Giants Stadium, where the final score was the Giants 20 and the Redskins 17. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS continues with regional action. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. Also join us next Saturday for a CFA doubleheader beginning with the Tennessee Volunteers and the Alabama Crimson Tide in a matchup of SEC powers, both unbeaten. The second game features the 10th-ranked Trojans of USC traveling to Notre Dame to take on the top-ranked Irish. It all begins Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern. The NFL Today postgame show has been sponsored by Miller Lite, official sponsor of the NFL Player of the Year Award. Miller Lite brings you the NFL's best.
watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.